Hey friends, Heather Creekmore here, live from the minivan for another bonus episode of the Compared to Who podcast. Today I'm tackling one of your questions. I got a listener question and it goes like this. Heather, if we are all the Imago Dei, if we're all made in the image of God, then why are some women obviously more beautiful than others? And I love this question so much. So if you have questions, you better send them to me because I love tackling this question. Okay, so thing one, whenever we ask a question, right, there's always defining the terms. That's an important component to asking a question, okay? So when you ask the question, you say, why are some women more beautiful than others? I think what's being implied there is physical beauty as, this is an important part, as our culture or as our world defines it, right? So physically, we are not all equally beautiful in terms of the world's or the culture's definition. But let's just stop right there for a second and just think about that, right? Like how impossible that is. Like I have listeners from all over the world, right? And so my listeners in India, the standards that you have for beauty are very different than the standards that we have here in America. In fact, I have a good friend who was a missionary in India just a few years ago, and she came back home for a furlough and she lost some weight. And when she went back to India, everyone thought she was too skinny and they were on her to gain weight because she was too skinny. She was no longer attractive, right? Now here in the U.S., we value skinny. <laughs> so if you come back skinnier, people are going to notice and they're going to ask you how you lost the weight and what your secret is. And there's going to be um, some uprising about it in a good way, right? So it's different. Beauty differs from culture to culture in terms of standards. It also differs from generation to generation, right? Like it wasn't that long ago. In fact, I think it was the 1940s. There were advertisements for women to gain weight because skinny women were not attractive. And so there were these like magazine newspaper ads for these weight gainers for women so that they could be more attractive. Can you imagine? And and so the things have switched, right? They have switched entirely, right? Even back, like if you look at the art from the Renaissance time period or even before that, like the women are very curvy. They're very full, right? Because at the time, thin women were, they were the poorer women, right? They couldn't afford to eat as much as the wealthier women, right? So there was a value in a certain body type even back then then. If you look back to the Bible times, right? The Bible is very clear about mentioning that a few women were physically beautiful, but we have to assume that that would have been physically beautiful by whatever that culture's standards were. Now, when the Bible talks about Rachel and Leah, it talks about Rachel being hot <laughs> and Leah being not. It says that Rachel was beautiful in form and appearance, but Leah's eyes were weak. And what we know is at the time in history, eyes were very important to your physical beauty. Your eyes said a lot about you, and maybe it was because they wore veils a lot of the times or had this part of their face covered, like from the nose, nose down. So your eyes were extremely important. So if you didn't have good eyes, Nah, sorry. I mean, I would say maybe our cultural equivalent would be, well, now it's like a butt. You've got to have a butt. It used to be thigh gap or flat abs, like all of these things. But even in the short time, even in like the eight years that I've been doing this, it's just crazy to see how the standard of beauty keeps changing. It used to be really stick skinny and now it's okay to be a little bit more muscular, a little thicker, a little bit more like you do CrossFit, but it keeps changing. You cannot keep up with culture standard of beauty or the world standard of beauty, right? So back to the question. If we're all made in the image of God, then why aren't we all physically beautiful in the same way? So I think the first the first challenge with that question is, right, we can't really answer that, right? Because we don't know whose standard is right, right? Like we can't say with any kind of certainty that physical beauty as defined in two, excuse me, I don't have any idea what year it is. <laughs> physical beauty as defined in 2021 is the standard. And that's the standard that God should have set 
for the whole Bible. It should have been set for the last 3,000 years. Like, that that's the standard, right? We can't say that, right? That doesn't make any sense. And we know that. We know that it changes. So to say that we're not physically beautiful is to kind of try, or not all equally physically beautiful, is to try to put us into a box according to a certain standard that actually can't be set to measure us all, okay? So that's problem one. Problem two is the definition of beauty that we use, right? So, so in that question, we are using the definition of beauty as physical beauty defined by culture. That's not how God defines beauty right? Samuel tells us that God looks on the heart. It's the inner part of the man that God sees. That's where God sees beauty. And that, my friends, is where I believe that Imago Dei lives, right? It's that part of us that is made in the image of God, right? And we can see this with Jesus. It's a perfect example of this, my friends. Jesus was not a good looking guy. I'm sorry, Chosen, like, or The Passion or Jim Caviezel, right? Like, <laughs> there's some good looking guys playing Jesus out there, but brass tacks, Jesus wasn't hot, okay? He wasn't a good looking guy. He was nothing to look at, right? It says that in the word of God, right? But yet, Jesus is the Imago Dei, right? He is God, <laughs> right? Not just made in the image of God, he is God. And so, I don't know about you, but to me, that's, that's pretty enlightening. If Jesus was physically ugly, and yet he is God, like, why would I be so concerned about all of my physical appearance stuff, right? So... <sighs> I think then the third thing we have to think about is, and this is just another way to, to reframe this, are we defining beauty the way God defines it or the way the world defines it? Are we looking to the word to tell us what's beautiful? Are we looking to the world? Because the world is gonna tell us what's beautiful is clear skin, good teeth, great shape, ample parts and skinnier other parts, right? Like that's what the world glorifies right? But what does the word glorify? It says a gentle and quiet spirit is beautiful, right? Uh, you know, the woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. All throughout scripture, we see examples of what is beautiful to God. The fruits of the spirit, those are beautiful qualities that we love to see in others and in ourselves too, right? But that's what makes a woman beautiful. So why aren't we all equally physically beautiful because we cannot define beauty the way that culture does and we cannot define beauty in, in any definitive way really the way the world does beauty is fleeting the bible tells us right and so yeah we all look different but there's no reason to compare we can all be beautiful when we try to be beautiful the way the word prescribes us to be beautiful right we all have the potential of being beautiful from the inside out and let's just be honest right like you know someone who is physically beautiful like who empirically like maybe has like good symmetry on their face and great hair and a great shape you know someone like that who has just a really ugly heart and who doesn't act very nice i mean it's just kind of the stereotypical like mean girls <laughs> <laughs> from the, you know, from the, the movies, right? Where it's like the girls in high school and there's like the hot girls, but they're the mean girls. And you look at those girls and you're like, they're kind of ugly. Like physically, yes, they're pretty. But as soon as they open their mouths, you're like, ugh, get me away. I don't want to be friends with you. I don't want to know you, right? But then we also all probably know someone, maybe someone you're related to, maybe your mom or your grandma or an older lady at church where you're not going to look at her and be like, you are hot boy, I want to look like you, hot woman. But because of the beautiful spirit inside of them, because of the light of Jesus shining through them, you think of them as beautiful. You see them as beautiful. And so friends, that's why my big encouragement to you is break free 
from comparison, break free from looking around and trying to decide how you should look. It's always going to change. It's never going to be the same. You're never going to be the hottest. I'm sorry. It's just a silly beauty contest to be in. I've done it. I can say that because I was in that beauty contest. I tried to be the hottest and you know what? There's always someone hotter. <laughs> there just is, right? And, and then like I mentioned before, and then culture standards going to go ahead and change on you anyway. And then you're going to age. I'm sorry, it's going to happen, but you're going to age. And then, you know, you're going to be, could be in your mid forties and all of a sudden hot's not really the word you use anymore. Then you start using words like attractive. So my encouragement to you is stop wasting time trying to meet culture standard of beauty now and start cultivating a beauty that will last, that'll last beyond this earth, that'll last beyond this life, right? And that God will see and reward. He's the one that we truly need to impress with our beauty. That's all for today's short little episode to answer this listener question. If you have a listener question, I hope that you will send it to me. I would love to tackle it. I hope something in today's episode has helped you stop comparing and start living. Bye-bye.